we've worked out that actually, uh, between the five of us, uh, we've attended a total of 30 World Cups. The veteran amongst us with nine World Cups <laughs> is Paddy Barkley. So I think, Patrick, I've got to start with you and say, what does the arrival of the World Cup in the, in the football calendar every four years, what, is it, what does it mean to you? Well, increasingly it means um, excitement, uh, in, and, and I, I mean that increasingly. Um, I love watching four for football matches in a, in a day. I mean, it's, it's rather pathetic. It, it actually has become the only form of fun uh, I have. <laughs> in the past, it's always been about the newspaper, what you're doing, how many pages, if it's a separate section. Now it's, I would say, my role is 78% digital and 20% newspaper. There's very little downtime now. I mean, in, in 98, certainly the first World Cup I did, you know, we had a pretty good time, really, at that World Cup. And, um, you know, you would... And 2002, <laughs> in fact. I mean, there are a lot of, you know, kind of lost days and, and, and nights there. You couldn't do that now. You couldn't do that now because you, you can't... I'm not saying that for better or worse, really. I mean, just as enjoyable, but it's it's different. It's different, and so it's it's there's no respite, really. It also means, I, sorry, yeah, David, sorry, but it yeah. also means that you two boys will be producing an, a, a great deal more journalism. But it, what it does mean is that I doubt very much if either of you two will produce more than three or four pieces of top-class journalism. And I think that is a consequence, that we get more journalism, and I think there's more good football writing mm -hmm. now than there's ever been before, but there's hardly any great football writing. Well, tw let's, talk, let, okay, let's talk about Twitter specifically. Will Twitter, Oliver, change your, your life in Brazil? Yeah, I think, I think it, will, it, will, it will change things. It has changed things already. Um, I think... You know, there is more and more pressure um, to, to put stuff out immediately because stuff gets broken on Twitter now. I think it's changed almost everything in a way. I mean, we shouldn't have overstate how much we use it and the importance of it. But if a story breaks, obviously, it it's becomes slightly difficult. I'm, I'm a big fan. I think it's really important. I think it's good. We're sharing articles with it, and our main account has got 440,000 followers. So send out an article, a lot of people will read it. So it's, it's a new way of finding an audience which, where newspapers are, sales are maybe dwindling. But I also think it's a danger because you can work on a story for two days. You put it out. It's always there. It's, it's there almost for everyone to pick up, and it depends on when you publish it. And it's... I think it, the danger would be that we don't spend two days on a really important story because within minutes it will be out there. You kind of lose ownership. We talk about ownership of a story. And if you've yeah. invested, yeah. when financial pressures are quite hard and you spend, say, weeks or, or months on it uh, or on a match-fixing stories or, or anything and suddenly it's out there and within an hour, it's, no one's going to be able to say where it came from, who spent the time on it. And, but we, we mustn't let that... Um, detract from the, the, the important things and that we need to do investigative journalism as well. Our average circulation is 550,000. Henry Winter has 650,000 followers. So if he puts out a story on his Twitter feed, it goes to 650,000 people. Say half the people who buy the Telegraph read the sports section, that's 250,000 people. I mean, that, that's the power of Twitter. Patrick, how does someone who's going to his, what did we decide it was, ninth World ninth, Cup, ninth World how does he regard Twitter? Well. I, I think it's the world's first regressive invention. I, I truly wish... You're not sitting on the fence there. If, no, I, could, no, no, if, no I, if I could uninvent anything... Call census? No, I just think it's the one. <clears throat> I just think it's, it, it, if someone offered you a deal whereby you will get between half an hour and an hour and a half less sleep per day, your annoyance level will be doubled. Would you say, hmm, sounds like a good idea, I'll have two of them. I mean, I, I just cannot see, it, 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 as someone who deals in opinion and filtering things, it's absolutely useless. Uh, for facts, of course, it's unmatched and it's changed everything. And of course, your opinion should be based on fact and information. But for me personally, 
It's horrible. I hate it. I have 120,000 followers, all of whom hate my guts. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, if, and, if Henry, and if Henry Winter wants them, he can have them. I think that I felt that FIFA um, kind of really messed up with the South African World Cup. I felt they de-Africanised that World Cup. And I thought that was a terrible shame because I was really looking forward to the African influence there. And having been to an African Cup of Nations, that is a proper yeah. African event. This felt like they had, they had just tried to sanitise it, really. And so, for instance, I don't know, small things like the, um, the women who sell um, pap and stuff like that, food by the stadiums, were, were, exiled from the, were exiled from the stadiums, were exiled from the perimeter of the stadiums. It was just a sanitised... The same a thing, sanitized the same thing experience. Even, the same thing happened, had happened in Germany four years earlier, where the, the purveyors of lovely German beer, which is part of the reason you go to Germany, and, and the hot dogs and so yeah. on, weren't allowed to because it had to be McDonald's and um, blah, blah, Budweiser. Yeah. I think I was perhaps a little naive when the Qatar bid was successful. I felt that it could be good, a good thing for the world. Um, much of what I've since learned about my former friend Qatar uh, has changed, has altered my opinion slightly on that. But I think that the idea of having a World Cup in the temperatures that you're likely to get in mid, our midwinter in Qatar would be the best thing that has ever happened to the World Cup technically. I think you'd see the best football. It would also be the most fan friendly in that the fan, if he wanted, would be able to see two, even three matches in one day, because the, everything would be together. But I rather think I'm talking about a fairy tale. And like Holly, I don't think it's going to happen. Thank you to our panel. Thank you for, to Paul Nolan and the organisers of this event. And thank you to you, our audience. I hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly have. Thank you.